Tell us what this sneaky bitch is up to. No one's my client. The allegiance is with me. Hi and welcome to Butter Movies. Members of Carter's task team lash out when the group's sustainability is endangered. Which means Diana and Tariq could also receive some possibly negative news. Tariq and Brayden meet with Noma and Kane. Tariq's enemies are in a difficult position because Tariq has Agent Young's proof against Noma, while Anya, she is definitely unaware of her mother's illegal activities. Tariq explains, I've set up for the information to be sent to Anya and the police if we should get hurt or anything else happen to us. Basically, Noma is kind of trapped with his new terms, which are for her to leave them alone. Meanwhile, Carter and his crew bust into Monet's house while she's there with Drew and Diana. Monet has been ignoring the dirty cop's calls and he's there for his cut, but he wonders whose stash she was stealing from when he caught her. She claims not to know, he threatens her with jail or death, then holds a gun to Diana's head to force Monet to answer. When she can't, Carter's team arrests Drew and throws him in jail, ordering him to finish off a guy who survived Carter's team's attack and who can become identify them. Camel meets with Carter at the end of the episode to tell him what he saw Nico do during a raid on a Russian dealer earlier in the hour, your task force is compromised. You've got a dirty cop on your squad. Carter tries to play it off, but he eventually confesses and tries to bring Camel into the corrupt fold. But the disgusted look on Camel's face lets Carter know the pitch isn't going to work, so he pulls out his gun and kills him, just like that. You should have listened to me, Carter says regretfully before leaving the scene. Things are getting out of control in the second half of Power Book 2, Go Season 4. In last week's episode, Diana was beat up by a dirty cop who was upset that Diana enlisted Tariq to complete a job rather than doing it herself. Later on in the episode, Detective Camel Tate, Rashad Tate's brother was shot and killed by Detective Carter after Tate learned that Carter is running a dirty operation with his team. This is all while Tariq and Brayden figured out a way to get back in the drug game and work with Noma after taking care of a problem for her. So, what happens next? Find out out this week's episode and here's everything you need to know about it. Power Book 2 Ghost has returned to our screens with the first of its final set of episodes. The mid-season finale aired back in July, leaving fans on tenterhooks with a dramatic cliffhanger. The show has followed a new cast of characters led by Tariq St. Patrick, the son of notorious drug dealer Ghost, as he has followed in his father's footsteps, entering the drug game. Catherine Busby, president of programming for Stars, called the final season explosive and a fitting crescendo in a decade of an immensely popular franchise. Thankfully for fans of the franchise, it is still set to continue on, with Book 3, Raising Canaan and Book 4, Force both moving into new seasons, and a new prequel series called Origins on the way. The first episode of Power Book 2, Ghost Season 4, was released on Friday the 7th of June, and episodes were released weekly on MGM Plus on Fridays in the UK. Season 4 Part 2 premiered on the 6th of September, with the first of the final five episodes. This means that fans can expect episode 7 to be released on Friday the 13th of September, 2024. The upcoming episodes will explore into Tariq St. Patrick's tumultuous journey. Michael Rainey Jr. returns as Tariq, who finds himself facing a situation strikingly similar to his late father, Ghost. Tariq must navigate the balance between leaving the criminal world behind or stepping up to take over. Manet Tehoda, portrayed by Mary Jade Oblige, will continue to deal with intense family drama and obstacles, especially after her confrontation with Detective Don Carter, played by Michael Ely. Meanwhile, Noma, played by Caroline Chikazi, will face challenge, and at the end of the day, it's Tariq's way or no way. There's a reason that man is alone, not a friend or person in his corner, outside Braden. Tariq's problems are always the biggest they're always the most important. And it's high time someone told him about himself, and I'm glad for existing in a world where the game is their life, unable to escape it, and most don't even want to. Manet doesn't want to leave the business because it's all she knows. It's scary to start over. We watch Tariq have to sweep a floor with disgust for a single shift and then balk at the idea of a life spent in don't honest work. Even if her intentions are in the right place, this belief that Monet can balance the business and her family in some new way feels misguided at best. And it got off to the worst start possible. 
For all those who knew there was something majorly off about Detective Carter, I'm currently slow clapping in your honor because not only is that man dirty, but he's also unwell. Carter has been laser-focused on Tariq and Monet, and while he appeared to be after them because he wanted to rid the streets of drugs and make New York a safer place, he had a rather twisted agenda. Manet and Drew had no choice but to agree, but Carter's cockiness was next level for a man who had just laid all his cards out on the table in front of a woman who would now make it her sole mission to bring him down. Of all the ways I saw this Carter storyline going, this was not one of them. He's crooked, sick, dangerous, all of the above. So, as we head into the final five episodes, we've got Tariq on a mission to become the biggest drug dealer in the city. Conversation with Brayden, where Tariq finally acknowledged and accepted the similarities between him and Ghost. Despite this realization, Tariq still doesn't fully see how similar he is to Ghost. Just like his father, Tariq is quite inconsiderate to the needs of loved ones around him, and he can't seem to prioritize their issues as he does his own. When Brayden voices his issues during an argument with Tariq, they get brushed aside as Tariq tells him to take this sha asterisk tea on the chin like I do every day. Later on, Tariq expects Diana to be okay with him being deep in the drug game as they raise their child, as opposed to pretending to be out of it like Ghost did. In each case, Tariq put his needs and desires above Braden's and Diana's without considering H. Manet nearly lost two more children in episode 4 of Ghost as both Kane and Tariq were in pursuit of Drew and Diana, respectively, in retaliation for trying to kill Monet and set up Tasha for a death of her own. When Monet learned of Diana's pregnancy, she immediately called off Kane moments before he would have killed Drew and she also convinced Tariq not to do the same to Diana. Now, it's time to put the family back together, but Monet wants to do it the easy way. The drug game is what tore her family apart, but now, Monet is hoping that it can bring her family back together. Realistically, that is the easy route towards rebuilding the family. All Monet knows is the game, and she's leaning on that to fix her past mistakes and right her wrongs with the family, but the drug game isn't a place for nurturing a family. If Monet wants things to be different, she has to take another approach. Sixth episode of Power Season delves into Rick's plan. For Tariq, the time we had been waiting for finally arrived in Power Book 2 Go Season 4, Episode 6. It was actually two moments. The first is that it was during college parties that Noma eventually learned about Tariq and Braden's covert drug enterprise. After the identical bag of coke was presented to her and claimed to have come from Stansfield and also found bag of coke in her daughter Anya's bag. In the second instance, Tariq acknowledges for the first time that he is just like his father. Tariq discovers, following a series of incidents that threw him off course, that he must use his father's skills to become an apex predator in order to dominate the drug trade, protect Braden and his mother Tasha, and secure his own safety. It looks to be a preface to season 4's epic second half, which premier full reminder of what makes the show so engaging, even as we approach the final stretch of the series. One standout element was the introduction of Carter as a villain. In contrast to previous antagonists like Jukebox or Ray Ray from OG Power, who were ruthlessly cold-blooded and unhesitant about killing innocents, Carter is driven by a warped sense of righteousness. His belief in his own moral high ground makes him a particularly compelling villain, and it's a shame we didn't get to see him in this role earlier, given this is the final season of Ghost. There's so much potential in his character that feels rushed with the season's limited time. The episode did a commendable job tying together various plotlines, a feat that the show manages well. The interconnectedness of characters has been a strong point, making the story feel cohesive. While some may disagree, I appreciate how rarely the characters feel disconnected from each other. In the mid-season premiere, Tariq brutally stabs Zion, leaving him barely clinging to life before ultimately shooting him to finish the job. Meanwhile, Diana faces a terrifying ordeal of her own. After refusing to cooperate with Officer Felicia's scheme, she is violently assaulted. The situation is even more distressing because Diana is pregnant, and the attack specifically targets her stomach, heightening the danger and emotional intensity of the scene. Michael Rainey Jr. previously explained that he felt it was unrealistic for Tariq to be involved in major physical fights while attending college. However, this time, Rainey Jr. believed the situation was different, as Tariq was forced into a life-or-death situation where he had to kill Zion. 
He shared how this heightened the stakes and how ready he was to mentally and physically prepare for the intense scene, understanding the gravity of the moment for his character. Well, I was just thinking, Tariq needs to do what needs to be done. You get what I mean when I say that if you got to stab up some people, then stab up some more? I was only about ready. I thought, damn. Let's make it exciting, another action scene, remarked Rainey Jr. In relation to combat sequences, this episode was caught in the middle of a drug bust by his task team. Monet and Drew's gang, excluding Ice, who was slain by Carter, have to give him 35% of their earnings and promise not to kill any people in order to avoid being arrested and facing possible jail time or even death. Tariq was first opposed to Diana's desire to keep her kid, but he eventually comes around to the notion after going on an acid trip. He must first come to an understanding with Diana because the two are at odds about Tariq's involvement in the drug trade while simultaneously becoming a father. Kane and Noma's romance continues, while Braden's own becomes the subject of a big argument between him and Tariq. Tariq learns two things when he finds Braden and tells him what happened, one, he's using cocaine backstage, and, two, L is well informed about their company. Tariq is not pleased with either outcome. There, he gets into a disagreement with Braden, who says that Tariq's problems always outweigh any negative things that may be happening in his own life. But when Elle confesses that she put some acid in Tariq's water bottle earlier that night, all of Braden's animosity toward his friend is forgotten. Manet calls a family meeting, saying they need a reset, even though Kane is unwilling to get past the fact that Drew and Diana tried to have her killed, if I can forgive them, Kane, you can, too, Mama Tehoda points out. He can't, and he leaves, but not before telling Diana that having her baby will be the worst decision she has ever made. Manet wants them to cut all the outsiders out and focus on their family, but Drew wants nothing to do with the Tehodas, and he leaves, too. When it's just the Tehoda women left, Manet promises that she'll leave Diana to make her own decision about the future of her pregnancy, then outright says that the baby might be a chance for a fresh start to do family the right way. After Manet apologizes to Drew, he agrees to help her get some product to restart the business, which she promises will support the family, and not the other way around. So he recruits some soldiers and forms a plan to steal some of Noma's product to prime the pump. Tariq has had to clean up messes he made. Not too long ago, he expressed his desire to leave and return for Tariq, but Tariq was right to question Braden's genuine commitment to their work. One of Tariq's worst traits is his limited perspective on the world, which stems from his incapacity to look beyond his own existence. He has no idea how to be a love partner or a friend to anyone. You could argue that he sort of understands what it is to be a son, but it would be too obvious, so I couldn't type it without scowling. One thing you can appreciate about Braden, though, is that he and Tariq can have a knockout, heavyweight fight, but the second Tariq was in trouble, Braden went running. Braden's taste in women is so awful. Elle seems like a decent girl who's been dealt a lot, and it's true that this is a crime, but in 2024, we don't try to make people loosen up by giving them drugs. Although it was kind of them to provide Elle with a more complex storyline than just the girl Braden is sleeping with and is slowly getting him hooked on coke, I was not impressed with. These two were trying to kill one another a few hours ago, and now they're splitting ultrasound photos? Not to mention Tariq lying to her face about Salim. It was shocking to hear Tariq come out and tell Diana his plans to be the big dog in town as if that was supposed to impress her or excite her after all the loss she'd recently incurred and the danger she'd been in. These two trying to navigate their relationship with zero trust or affection and then successfully co-parent in the future seems like something that will never happen. It makes you wonder whether Tariq will rethink his plans for total bloodshed. Hint, the answer is no. Diana was not the only Tehoda with a choice to make. Manet decided that she was finally ready to step up, put on her world's best mom hat, and reunite a family that had been fractured beyond repair. Power shows can be so comical in the way they have people ready to fight to the death and then turn around soon after that and have them talking about the depth of familial bonds and the need for everyone to put aside attempted murder and come together for the greater good. Much like Tariq, she had a decision to make about her next move, and just like Tariq, she chose the business, though she sprinkled in some talk about the business being second to family that I don't believe for a second. Manet doesn't want to leave the business because it's all she knows. 
It's scary to start over. We watch Tariq have to sweep a floor with disgust for a single shift and then balk at the idea of a life spent in don't honest work. Even if her intentions are in the right place, this belief that Monet can balance the business and her family in some new way feels misguided at best. And it got off to the worst start possible. For all those who knew there was something majorly off about Detective Carter, I'm currently slow clapping in your honor because not only is that man dirty, but he's also unwell. Carter has been laser focused on Tariq and Monet, and while he appeared to be after them because he wanted to rid the streets of drugs and make New York a safer place, he had a rather to work things out with their child on the way, Tariq dropped a bomb on Diana, but telling her his plans to remain in the game as they raise their child. Diana, traumatized by how her experience with parents in the drug game, is set on her keeping her first child as far away from the game as possible. So, she makes it clear to Tariq that his plans won't work for her and their child. Just like Drew, Diana is set on putting herself first and prioritizing her wants and needs. This means putting herself, and her future child, above the needs of her family for once. In order to do that, Diana can't compromise for the sake of Tariq. If Tariq can't make the necessary sacrifices in order to create a safe life for their child, then there's no point in Diana trying to make things work. We saw how things ended with Ghost as well as with Lorenzo and Dante Emeka, Diana doesn't have to be the next to experience it. The moment we knew would come finally arrived for Tariq in Power Book 2, Ghost Season 4, Episode 5 titled Ego Death. Actually, it was two moments. The first is Noma finally caught on to Tariq and Braden's underground drug operation through college parties. She discovered it after finding a bag of coke in her daughter Anya's bag after the same bag of coke was brought to her and said to have come from Stansfield. Noma walks into the next college party with Kane to see the operation live in action, and though their plan is to kill Tariq, they're forced to put a stop to it after Tariq uses Anya as a distraction. The second moment is Tariq finally accepting that he is no different from his father. After a string of events that knocked him off his path, Tariq realizes that he needs to use his dad's qualities to become an apex predator to stand at the top of the drug game and ensure the safety of himself and loved ones like Brayden and his mother Tasha. It foreshadows what appears to be an epic second half to season 4 which begins late. These two were trying to kill one another a few hours ago, and now they're splitting ultrasound photos? Not to mention Tariq lying to her face about Salim. It was shocking to hear Tariq come out and tell Diana his plans to be the big dog in town as if that was supposed to impress her or excite her after all the loss she'd recently incurred and the danger she'd been in. These two trying to navigate their relationship with zero trust or affection and then successfully co-parent in the future seems like something that will never happen. It makes you wonder whether Tariq will rethink his plans for total bloodshed. Hint, the answer is no. Diana was not the only Tejada with a choice to make. Manet decided that she was finally ready to step up, put on her world's best mom hat, and reunite a family that had been fractured beyond repair. Power shows can be so comical in the way they have people ready to fight to the death and then turn around soon after that and have them talking about the depth of familial bonds and the need for everyone to put aside attempted murder and come together for the greater good. Much like Tariq, she had a decision to make about her next move, and just like Tariq, she chose the business, though she sprinkled in some talk about the business being second to family that I don't believe for a second. Manet doesn't want to leave the business because it's all she knows. It's scary to start over. We watch Tariq have to sweep a floor with disgust for a single shift and then balk at the idea of a life spent in don't honest work. Even if her intentions are in the right place, this belief that Monet can balance the business and her family in some new way feels misguided at best. And it got off to the worst start possible. For all those who knew there was something majorly off about Detective Carter, I'm currently slow clapping in your honor because not only is that man dirty, but he's also unwell. Carter has been laser focused on Tariq and Monet, and while he appeared to be after them because he wanted to rid the streets of drugs and make New York a safer place, he had a rather twisted agenda. And it was Braden, even if I was nodding along with both of them when they were getting their wax in. Braden's done a lot for Tariq, but Braden has also messed up. His made messes Tariq has had to clean up. He wanted out not long ago and came back for Tariq, but you can't blame Tariq for having doubts about how invested Braden truly is in what they're doing. Everything Monet is doing feels too late. 
the damage has been done, and she's dealing with adults with their own lives and ambitions. They no longer feel the pressure and need to conform to their mother's wishes. Kane's got his own thing going on. Diana's been saying she's out and being with child, there's less insistence she put herself in danger. And Drew, well, he's always had one foot out the door, and he's ready to move the hell on now. Props to Drew for being the one person to hold Monet accountable. He said what he's felt, and he's made her work for his forgiveness, which was something he didn't have to extend to her in the